Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem daily temperatures. We are just given an array of integers which represent temperatures and we want to return an array answer such that at every single position in answer, it's going to be the same exact size as our temperatures array. And at every single position in answer, we want to know for the ith day, whatever the temperature was on the ith day, we want to find how many days did it take for us to find a temperature that was greater than the temperature on the ith day. So for example, let's take a look at this uh, temperatures array. We can see there's eight values in the temperatures array and there's eight values in the output for each value in the temperatures array. For example, 73. How many days did it take us in this array to to the right of, of 73? How many days did it take us to find a new temperature that was greater than 73? Well, on the, on the exact next day, we found 74, which is greater than 73, so it took us one day. So in the first position, we're gonna return a one. What about 74? How many days did it take us to find a new temperature that was greater than it? 75, one day later, right? Okay, for 75, how many days did it take us? 71 is not greater, 69 is not greater, 72 is not greater, but 76 is greater, and you can see that took about four days, right? So then we return a four in that position. Now there are some temperatures that never had a temperature greater than them. Look at these last two temperatures. We had a 76, nothing to the right of 76 is greater than it. And of course the last position, 73, there's no temperatures to the right of it in the first place. So nothing was greater than 73 to the right. So for these ones, we're gonna return a default value of zero. So we're gonna build an output array. Now looking at the the input, what's the brute force way to do it? Of course we could do an n squared approach, right? Like for every temperature, we would look through the entire temperature array after it, right? And see, okay, well, how many days did it take us to find a temperature that was greater than this one, right? And then do the same thing for the next temperature over here, look through the entire array, see, you know, what's the first day that we could find a greater temperature and keep doing that. Now that's gonna be big O of n squared time complexity, but there actually is an easier way to do this problem if we use some extra memory. Now let's just iterate through the input array once going to the right, but we do need to know that, for example, we have to remember the previous temperatures that we looked at. So if we, you know, let's say the previous temperature here was a 73, like in the input example, and then the next temperature was a 74. When we get to this position, we have to somehow remember what was the temperature that came before it, right? Now, obviously, we could use a list for that, or in this case, a stack would be more intuitive because one thing we're going to notice is if we get a temperature greater than it, 74, right, then we're going to say, okay, what was our previous temperature, 73? So this temperature is greater than it, right? So we can, we can keep track of what index this occurred at and what index we're at right now and say, okay, the difference between these indexes was one, right? We clearly found a temperature, the first temperature greater than the 73. So then what are we going to do from our stack? Well, then we don't have to remember this anymore, right? We're going to say, okay, we're going to put a one in the output and we can pop this from our stack right so we're going to do stack dot pop so this will be popped from the stack now when we get to a 75 the exact same thing is going to happen right clearly we see these temperatures are in increasing order so we see okay one day it took us to get to get a temperature greater than this we'll put a one in the output pop this from the stack and if we just had increasing temperatures that would be really easy for us right but it's not always going to happen where we have increasing temperatures what happens if we had a 72 that came after it well we would we would look at this 72 and compare it to the top of the stack say okay this is not greater so we can't pop from the stack but we're also going to take this value and add it to the stack so now we're gonna have two values inside of our stack and what, what happens if we got another smaller value, 71, right? So far for none of these values, do they have a temperature to the right of them that's greater, right? So all three of these are gonna be on the stack. What are we noticing about our stack? It's gonna be in monotonic decreasing order, right? This is a type of stack problem that I have solved on this channel a couple times, but this is more of a beginner friendly monotonic decreasing stack problem. What this means is that our stack is gonna be in decreasing order. That's what monotonic means. It's always in decreasing order. Now, technically, what if what happens if we got another 71 over here, right? 
Well, in that case, 71 is not greater than this. So th all four of these would be on our stack currently, right? So it's technically not monotonic decreasing order. It could be equal as well, right? We're noticing it's not strictly decreasing. If two values are equal, they're also going to go on the stack. But if we got a greater value... If I got to a 72, right, what am I going to do? Clearly, 72 is greater than the top of our stack. So I pop this one, right? But now we have a new value on the top of our stack. This one is is our 72 greater than this. It's not. So so our stack is like this. Now we took we looked at our stack. We took this guy out. This is no longer in our stack. But these three values are in our stack. And still notice how the the stack is still in monotonic decreasing order. It's always going to be the case. What happens if instead of a 72 I had a 73? Then of course we'd still pop this 71. And then we'd we'd also want to pop this 72 because now 73 is greater than 72 we pop this but it's not the case for this one but if you know we change this value to a 74 uh, excuse my bad handwriting over here but if we change this to a 74 then yes we are going to pop this one as well so no matter what we do our stack is always going to be in monotonic decreasing order if i add a 70 over here it's it, we're not going to pop anything it's still in decreasing order so let's just run through a quick simulation. Let me show you how we can get this output in linear time using a stack. So first value 73, we're going to compare it to the top of our stack. Our stack is empty, so we're not going to do anything. We're just going to take the 73, add it to the stack. Next, we're at 74. We're going to compare it to the top of the stack. 74 is greater than 73, right? What index did 73 occur at? At index 0. What index does 74 occur at? At index 1. So we take the difference, 1 minus 0. So it took us 1 one position to find a value greater than 73 so we can pop 73 from our stack and then 74 is going to be on the top of our stack now now exact same thing is going to happen with 75 right 75 is greater than this the difference between the indexes is one so we add a one to the output for 74 and we pop 74 now we're at and we add 75 to the stack. Next we get 71. 71 is not greater than the top of our stack. So all we do is add it. We don't update the output in either of those positions. Again, we get a smaller value, 69. So we add it to the stack. We can't pop any of these. 69 is not greater than either of these. Next we get a 72, right? 72 is greater than 69, right? So we pop 69. What was the difference between the indices? It was one, so we're gonna take uh, in the corresponding output position, which is in this position for 69, we're going to say, okay, there was an index difference of one. Now we're going to look at the next top bar stack, 71. So the difference between these two is two. So for 71, we're going to say it took two days for us to find a greater temperature than 71. So for this position, we add a two. So we pop 71 from our stack. Now 72 is not greater than 75, so we still have a hole in our output over here. We never found a greater temperature than 75 yet. And similarly for 72, we have a hole. Next, we get 76 and compare it to the top of our stack. So 76 is greater than 72, we pop 72. The difference, the number of days it took us was just one day, so we can add a one for 72 and then we look at the next top of our stack yes we finally found a temperature greater than 75 it took us one two three four days to do that so we can add a four in the output in the corresponding position over here and we can pop 75 from our stack i think i just need one more square over here because we have one last temperature in our input 73 so we're going to add 73 see 73 is not greater than 76 so we can't pop that. And now at the end, we have no more temperatures to add, right? We still have two temperatures left in our stack. And whatever the default value for the unpopped uh, temperatures is just going to be zero, right? They told us in the uh, description of the problem that if we can't get a greater temperature, we're just going to put zero for these. So that's how we build the output. You can see it exactly matches the output that they built in the example. And... We did that in linear time by using this monotonically decreasing stack in O of n time, O of n memory. So now let's jump into the code. So we are going to have a result or answer array, and it's initially going to be default values of zero because that's kind of what they tell us. Uh, and it's going to be the exact same length as the input array temperatures. I'm also going to have a stack. Remember, this is our extra memory. It's going to 
uh, contain a pair of values. In the in the drawing example, I only showed that we're adding the temperature, but we're also gonna add the index of the temperature so we can calculate the difference, basically calculate the number of days it took us to find a greater temperature. So we're gonna be adding two values to the stack, a pair of temperature and the index that that temperature occurred at. Next, we're just gonna iterate through the t uh, temperatures array. Uh, we're gonna enumerate this, meaning we're gonna get the, in the index of it and the value at the same time. It just makes the code a little bit cleaner. I is the index, T is the temperature. First thing we're gonna do is see, does is our stack empty? And if it is, is this temperature greater than the temperature on the top of our stack? The top of our stack is index negative one in Python, and the temperature is the first value in that pair, so index zero. And so if this is true, of course we can pop from our stack, right? So stack.pop, so I'm gonna call it the stack temperature and the stack index, which we just popped, right? And for this temperature, we want to, you know, in the result output say, okay, whatever the index of this temperature was, stack index, we want to compute the number of days it took us to find a greater temperature. We can do that with I, the current temperature that we're at, minus the, temp the index of the uh, temperature that we just popped, and we take the difference of those, that gives us the number of days it took to find a greater temperature, and then we're just adding it to the stack at the corresponding position we want to. And then once that while loop is done, it might execute zero times, it might execute multiple times. After it's done, then we finally wanna append to the stack the temperature that we're currently traversing. So a pair, the T, the temperature value, and the index of that temperature. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and return our result. The reason we don't have to fill in any extra zeros if our stack is non-empty is because we already initialized our result to be zero. So if we never filled anything in, the default value is automatically going to be zero. So you can see the solution works and is pretty efficient. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.